Hey everyone, what's up? It's Friday and this is Amazon Ads Raw Daily with me, Alexander. And today we've got two updates and news for you to share. But before we start, I would like to thank you all for listening to the podcast, for tuning in every day, for giving me at least some kind of feedback in, in terms of some graphs I can see on my podcast host, which is a case and on my YouTube channel as well, where I can see how the episodes are perceived. Um, so thank you all very much for listening. And one thing, if you ever have any feedback about the podcast, if you ever, know, if you ever have any questions, anything which I should maybe dig into a bit more, where you would be interested to get my opinion on, then just write me a message you can write me on linkedin directly or you can send an email to amazon ads raw at gmail.com that's one word amazon ads raw at gmail.com the two news for today are a new update of the amazon ads api overview page it's called amazon ads advanced tour center so this is now, I don't know if this was called the whole time Amazon Ads Advanced Tour Center, but this is now the place where you would see all the information around API, bulk sheets, and developing informations. So the Amazon Ads Advanced Tour Center now has a new look and feel. Um, it's now also responsive for mobile, and they have split the... Uh, documents now in three different categories. One is developer guides that will be featuring tutorials, product overviews, and code samples for developers. The next section is where I usually look into more often, I would say, the API reference or reference, I think it's pronounced, which would contain the open API specification and conceptual content about REST APIs. So you would be able to see what metrics field segments you're able to pull from an API, which is helpful if you talk with your developer or your data connectivity team to tell them exactly what you need. And the last top, the last section here is the, Amazon calls it no code tools. And basically this is a very nice word for the bug sheets. So it's the information around all the bug operations um, which uh, which you have and Amazon calls it Amazon no-code tools. Obviously, it's not only bug operations for sponsored ads, but also for a DSP. And the other no-code tools is basically the advertising console and the Amazon DSP console. So this new advanced tool center is now a little bit refreshed has a, a new look and feel but the same informations and kind of a new shiny home page where you would uh, see what's new popular things and you get some guides and resources so it all looks and feel a little bit more updated the next update also comes from the advanced tool center or let's say it comes from uh, the API basically, but it's also listed on here. Vendor account, vendor test account, that's very important. Vendor test accounts are now available for Belgium. So that's um, interesting for people who would already start to pull some data or to see how it looks like. So you can create some testing accounts in the tool center yourself, and then you can pull data from these accounts or push data i believe i'm not 100 sure if you can also push but you can have these test accounts and you can play around with them even if you don't actively sell in belgium that's the two updates around amazon ads and the amazon ads advanced <laughs> tool center the other big topic for today comes from a new ai company which i think is a mayor story and I'll tell you why I do think it's a mayor story before I actually tell you about the story. 
If we think about AI, and AI has made a huge, huge hype in the last couple of months and weeks. Um, we can even see there's a, a booming stock market based on AI companies. NVIDIA, for example, has reached all-time highs. Yesterday, Microsoft stock has reached all-time highs, and uh, Google is up, Meta is up. So all the big companies, all big tech, which is in the realms of AI, is having a, a good time at the stock market currently with all the AI boom and hype. And if you think about AI companies, there's not much coming actually from Europe. I know that Stable Diffusion is an open source software which comes from a Munich university, so from Germany. And in general, German universities are very good in basic uh, how do you call it? basic science or basic uh, uh, research and development. So we do have some smart people here, but usually in Germany or in Europe, we are not very good in creating also the big companies, worldwide uh, companies. America is far better in this. Uh, just look at Google, Amazon, Meta, NVIDIA and all the big companies and all the big tech uh, companies in the world, they're all coming from the US. And with the European government and the European regulations, there is a tense uh, tension going on between American companies and the European government, the European commissions uh, about data protection and other things. And because of that, European people are not allowed to use BART. BART is the large language model or the chatbot based on the on a large language model from Google. And if you are using a European IP, you're not able to use Google's BART. If you use a VPN and you uh, pretend you're having an US IP, then you can use BART for free and you can play around with it. We don't have that problem with ChatGPT, but there's also some uh, uh, some resources which um, reported in Italy there were some problems using ChatGPT. So you can see eventually with the European government and the data protection laws we have in Europe active, uh, it could be kind of tricky um, for European people to actually access all of the available AI tools. And therefore, it does make lots of sense that there is a european-based ai company which tries to integrate with the existing laws here and uh, will also be kind of an equal player in the market and therefore this news is very exciting um because it's a it's a new funded ai company it's called mistral it's founded in paris france and the founders it's three people they're actually they already received, so the company is four weeks old. They have no product, nothing. And they received already a hundred million fund uh, or, or investment, not a fund. So they, they, the company is four weeks old with three people and they received 100 million uh, pre whatever you call it. I'm not, I'm not a venture capital expert, but pre seed, pre product. Um, investment from also some very known German venture capital companies, Headline and Love Familia. And the reason for that most likely is the team, because the free people are not just anyone. They are actually experts from Google and Meta. So uh, the, the, the guys are called, uh, let me see where was the names. Uh, I'm actually, I'm not actually familiar with them myself, but they are Guillaume Lamplé, Arthur Mensch, and Timothy Lacroix. And they have worked on Google's DeepMind, and they've worked on the KI model Chinchilla. Uh, the others have worked on the Meta large language model LLAMA. And all of them together have now founded this mystery company with the aim to create a European machine learning company, um, uh, which they aim for to be an open source company, an open source software, at least for, for the last language model. And now you, you might wonder, why do they need 100 million? 
first of all, they want to hire the best people in the world for AI. And those people are currently very, very <laughs> requested. Or how do you say they are? First of all, they're rare and everybody wants them at this moment. So you have to pay lots of money for these people. And the next thing is AI is tech heavy. So you cannot just come up with an AI on your phone easily. You need big, big, big G. P use to train this model. So that's why also NVIDIA is getting so big because they are the supplier of the AI technology. NVIDIA's GPUs are, I, I don't know how, how big the market share is, but most likely like 70, 80% in the area of GPUs for large language model training or AI training. And if you buy these racks, they cost a lot. Um, and that's why they need lots of money. The bigger the models, the more chips you need, the more computing power, and that is currently very expensive. Eventually, that will change in some years. Um, once we have quantum compute, computer techniques available for us, um, that could increase, tremendously increase the computing power by decreasing eventually also the amount of money needed to pay for the technology. But that's not on the soon to seen horizon. And therefore, companies need lots of money. There was even a study in Germany about um, from from a from a German company on how much how much money would we need in order to create a, a dedicated K AI infrastructure to um, uh, to calculate our own large language models. And they calculated it needs at least 400 million euros to come up with the infrastructure for training these models. And that tells you this shit is expensive. And therefore, it's maybe um, yeah important that these companies get lots of funding upfront because they need to buy the hardware and they need to buy the people. And this new Mistral company is not the only company which is currently hyped in the scene uh, here in Europe. There's also another star which is called Aleph Alpha, if you have not heard of that, or another uh, recently founded company, Nionic, which is from the previous AI chief uh, uh, from SAP, which is another big German IT company. Um, so there's a couple of interesting companies to watch in this space, also coming from Europe. And I'm very interested to see how, how this whole AI game is kind of continuing in the next couple of years. And with that thought, I wish you all a pleasant Friday, an amazing weekend. Take care and hear you on Monday. Bye-bye.